Hello and welcome to our podcast on the idea of reading visual images. And yes, we do mean to read them, meaning there is a certain amount of literacy that we as readers, as text studiers, need to have in order to truly understand what we're seeing when we are presented with something that is more visual than text. So let's go ahead and see what we're talking about here. First off, what do we even mean by a visual text? Anything that has more images, pictures than text. There could certainly be a combination of those, but when we have something that is predominantly visual, meaning we don't have to read words as our primary source of input, then we're looking at a visual medium. So these could be political cartoons, ads, advertisements, films, documentaries, music videos. Those are all visual mediums, and those are all visual texts, as we'll call them. They have their own set of literacy rules that are used to make them. Therefore, we have to be very aware of those rules as we try to understand them, because I think oftentimes we misinterpret visual images. So why does this even matter? Why are we taking time to help explain how visual images are created and then understood? Can't we just intuitively figure it out? Aren't we just inborn with this ability to look at a picture and understand it? And I would say to an extent, yes, there are certain things that we intuitively understand about visual images, but we live in such a visual world and companies are really seeking to manipulate their audience. People are wanting others to buy their product, vote a certain way, believe a certain thing, endorse a certain product or political candidate. All of these things are increasingly more and more visual. And so if we want to be aware of the media that's coming into us so that we can properly process it and then make our own opinions, we need to understand how these things are set up so that we can then make our own decision and then go ahead and act on that decision. So we've said this a lot throughout many of our podcasts in the class. Please remember that everyone has a story to tell. Some people will choose to express their theme and message for the world in a novel or a short story or a feature film or a song or a rap or whatever. These visual images are one person's or a group of people's ideas about their world. They are somebody's story. And so this is their perspective on something, their point of view, even their bias toward or against a subject. And so just like any newspaper article or short story or poem or whatever that expresses the author's theme, these visual images have a theme of their own, a lesson they would like to teach to the world. And so we spend a lot of time figuring out how to read a novel. We need to spend at least a little bit of time now figuring out how to read a visual image. So step number one we need to make a promise that we will set aside our own biases and then make a concerted, honest effort to read the visual images message. We can't look at that and say, well, I believe X and Y are false. Therefore, when I look at this and it's saying anything about X and Y, that it's automatically on our side or automatically against our side. We have to be very clear that we have to set our own personal baggage aside and seek to dissect the visual image and get to its theme. We can't project our own theme on it. We have to see what the image's theme is on its own. Kind of step two here, once we've decided that we're going to set aside our own bias and see what's going on, we have to observe the two main tracks of visual images. One is going to be the visual track, so those are things that we see, colors, arrangement, positioning on the text, the size of things, the font that's used. Those are visual track images. The next track we have to look at is what we call the text track. This is when specific words are written on images. Now this would not be the font that they use because that would be visual track. These are going to be the words themselves. And so we need to really break down a visual image into both the visual and the text track, figure out what each means individually, and then put them both back together in order to figure out what the whole text means. So if we break it down a little bit more, let's look at that visual track. Literally, it's just what do we see? What event is being depicted here? Is this a person? Is this a Supreme Court decision? Is this the news? What's going on? What exactly is in this picture? 
And then the next step, and this is probably the most important part, how are these images being depicted? How they are depicted, meaning in terms of size or accuracy or caricature or color palette, these will reveal the bias of the image. If we want to make somebody seem powerful, we may draw them very big. If we want to make somebody look silly and show that through our picture we're making fun of them, we might not be real accurate with what they look like. We might caricature them. If we want to send a very negative message about somebody, we might portray them in a color palette of black and white, rather than the true color that they are in. So once we've identified what we literally see, we have to make this mental jump. And this is where we move to what we interpret based on what we see. What might the author be saying about the subject by drawing him or her this way? Yes, I observe that they have caricatured a certain president. Fine. What's the author trying to say by making them look silly? I understand. So-and-so is drawn rather large. What are they trying to say about that person by drawing them extra large? So some ways that images are manipulated. The idea of caricature. This is where we take somebody's maybe physical features and distort them to make them look a little silly. So Obama is kind of known for a narrow chin, big toothy grin, and some ears that, you know, kind of stick out a little bit. Well, somebody has caricatured him by taking those features and expanding them to make him look less accurate and perhaps starting to poke a little fun at him. Another example from the 2008 primary, we have Hillary Clinton and Obama again, and they have both been caricaturized. Again, his big toothy grin, pointed chin, big ears, and her with her pretty famous hairdo there. So they're taking the real people and starting to distort them or caricaturize them in order to send a message about them. So we look at this and have to take two steps. Number one, we, do we recognize that these people are caricatures, meaning that's not what they actually look like? And then step two, we have to ask ourselves, what is the author of this text trying to say by caricaturing these political figures? Another example from history, this is Andrew Johnson. He was president after Lincoln, and you can see that he has been caricatured a bit, that his head has been drawn exceptionally large. So we'd have to observe that first and say, yes, his head is extra large. Then we'd have to make that mental jump and say, why? Why would the author of this text do that? Why does that matter for the author's comment on this particular president? So then after we've looked at the visual track, we look at the text track steps. Number one, literally what do we see? What words are printed on this image? And then we have to kind of put this together and say, well, what is the text's tone with those words? Are these words an honest assessment of something? Is the author in support of whatever is drawn there? Or are they being sarcastic, meaning saying the opposite of what they actually mean. And if we can deduce the text tracks tone, that will help us reveal the bias of the image as a whole. So again, the very difficult task we have is that we have to figure out the tone of the text track. We have to read between the lines. What is being written realistically? What is mocking? What is being used as sarcasm? This is exceptionally hard to do because it seems like if the words are written, then that's what they mean. But oftentimes when we put the text track together with that visual track, we can put that whole puzzle together and see that the author of the text is not being 100% completely honest. They might be manipulating a little bit. So if we examine this slide just for its text track, we can look at it and say, okay, what words are written on this image. All right, so it says on the, on the podium, it says George Wallace Bush. Okay, interesting. So once we've identified the words that are physically on this image, we have to then try and figure out, well, what do they mean? What does the author of this text mean by writing these words over this image? Another one we're looking at just for the text. It says physically, what do Iraqi and American women have in common? Bottom left, it says, may lose some rights under a new constitution. And then over on the right, we have a poster that says, save Roe versus Wade. And at the bottom, it says, may lose rights under a new Supreme Court. Okay, we've identified the text track. 
and we have to kind of figure out what do they mean by this. What do Iraqi and American women have in common? Okay, something about constitution under the bottom there. All right, so maybe we've got to put these clues together. And so one more here. We have a dark chalkboard image, but then we move to the text track. We see all kinds of things that look like they're written on a school chalkboard. Stay in school, make us proud, study hard, don't ever give up. Okay, great, things written on a chalkboard. But then you get an additional text track at the very bottom that says, Comrade Obama's radical socialist indoctrination of our school children. Interesting. So we have two different sets of text going on. That on the chalkboard itself, and then some down at the bottom there. That all is text track for that image. So it's kind of hard to talk about text by itself, because we really need to get to this slide. The idea of putting what we see visually and what we read as text track together. We must put them together for interpretation. So we have to look at this and go, all right, so the visual track is making somebody look silly by caricature, and then they're using black and white to make them look kind of scary, and then there's some words written over it. Hmm, what do all these mean? Is the text track reinforcing the visual image? Is the text track being sarcastic of the visual image and meaning the opposite? Those are things we have to just toy with and think through and put all together. And then the big thing at the bottom, like we've talked about in a lot of these deductive reasoning types of things, we must have background knowledge on the topic of the image. So if we go back to the one here with George Wallace Bush standing in front of the, as it says, the church house door, this is referencing a very famous historical event where George Wallace, who was governor of Alabama, stood in front of a schoolhouse door and said the famous words segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. So not only is this poking fun at Bush at the visual track because he's caricaturized and making fun of him because of the words he's saying, once we put all of these together, we can see that this is referencing a very famous historical event and therefore, all of the content of this visual image are pointing to one thing. It is the author of this saying, in his or her opinion, that George Bush is wrong on this issue, much like George Wallace was wrong on the issue of segregation back in the 60s. But the point is, we have to put what we see together with what we read, plus our own background knowledge together, taking out our own personal biases, whether we like or dislike Bush or believe this particular statement or not, put them all together and ask ourselves, what is the cartoon saying? Not what do we want it to say, but what is it saying? Once we figure that out, then we are more than welcome to disagree with it and say, ah, I disagree. I think uh, this way of marriage is the only way or no, it's not. But our task right now is what the heck is the text even saying? Then we can agree or disagree. And so one way to think about these issues and this background knowledge is always go back to that political spectrum. Look at liberal versus conservative. Look at Republican versus Democrat. Look at change versus tradition. Secular, which means non-religious, versus the religious. Men versus women. Rich versus poor. Tall versus short. Think about what are common stereotypes what are things that are going to be critiqued in society, and try to figure out what is the visual text saying, plus the text track, what is it all saying together. That's kind of the point of these visual images. So that's about it for now in terms of how to read visual images. Just to summarize, one, we have to set aside our own biases. Two, we then have to look at the visual track, so what is drawn on the image. We need to then read what is being said on this image, and then we have to put it all together. What do all of these things point toward? Is the visual image and the text all going in the same direction, or is something being sarcastic, meaning the opposite of what we're looking at? This is a very difficult skill. We'll continue to practice with this. But for right now, if you have any questions in terms of the key steps to take, go ahead and bring those into class. We'll get those shored up. And then we will continue to do a ton of practice and modeling with these when we physically get into class. As always, thanks for listening, and we will see you soon.